Okay, so class, I am going to give you a short background about Persian literature, okay? So, this is the type of language that they have. Okay, Persian literature. Persian means uh, it derives from Latin Persia, deriving from Greek. Persis, right? It comprises oral compositions and written text in the Persian language, and it is one of the world's oldest literatures. It spans two and a half millennia. And the Persian language has been either native or official language. Persian literature class is the jowl in the crown of Persian culture. It has profoundly influenced the literatures of Ottoman Turkey, the Muslim India, and the Turkic Central Asia, and has been a source of inspiration for all these liter um, for all these authors. Okay. So the former the former name of Iran was Persia and it was still used till today and it was started in 1935. So Iran has been referred to as Persia by the West because of the writings from the Greek historian so called Iran, Persis, which means the land of the Persians. So, literally, Iran means land of the Aryans. Okay, so here is the Iran here in the map, and you will see the surrounding countries like Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iraq. We also have Turkey, Turkmenistan, and Iran is one of the world's oldest continuous major civilizations with historical and urban. Okay, with historical and urban settlements dating back to 4000 BC. Okay, if we're going to trace the history, okay, in 1500 BC, this was a time when uh, Persia or Iran was occupied by Medes and Persians. 525 BC, the time of King Cyprus, I mean King Cyrus and the Great, and he became the ruler of the empire that overthrew Medes. All right. In 331 BC, Persia fell to Alexander and it was Alexander was the leader. And 312 uh, BC, we have now the Seleucids. 247 BC, Greek was speaking Persians. And 224 BC, the Sasanians. 641, it was the Arab Muslims. 12th century, this was a time when they were invaded by Mongols. 1501 to 1722, it was the Safavid dynasty. 1794 to 1925, we have the Qajar dynasty. Persian or Farsi is still spoken in Tajikistan and Afghanistan. 
and it's the official court language of India for 200 years. You know, uh, this has the largest ethnic group of Iran, which has 51% of the population, and the majority of the population of Iran is Chaiti Muslim. Okay, so this is just a picture showing their representation. Persian literature was little known in the West before the 19th century, and it became much better known following the publication of several translations from the works of the late medieval Persian poets. And it inspired works by various Western poets and writers. Not all Persian literature is written in, in Persian. As some consider works written by ethnic Persians in other languages. So they also use Greek and Arabic. At the same time, not all literature written in Persian is written by ethnic Persians or Iranian or Iranians as why? Because we also have Turkic and Caucasian and the Indian poets and writers who use Persian language in the environment of Persianate culture. Okay, look at this one. This is an example of an Arabic alphabet okay this is the this is the persian alphabet Alright. Okay. So I should I just played a, an audio of the Persian alphabet. Yes, do the chahar hand shish ha ash no da. Okay, and this is the Greek alphabet. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta. Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, okay? Now, let's have the Persian poetry. Iranians wrote in both Persian and Arabic, and Persian predominated in later literary circles. Persian poets such as Ferdowsi, Sadi Hafiz, Attar, Nizami, Rumi, Omar Khayyam are also known in the West and have influenced the literature of many countries. Okay, Maulana Rumi is one of the best loved Persian poets. He was born in Balkh or Baksh and wrote in Persian. He lived in Konya and then the capital of the Seljuks in Anatol. We also have Omar Khayyam, perhaps the most popular Persian poet in the 19th and early 20th centuries. Okay. And his work was freely translated by Edward Fitzgerald in 1859. Khayyam is 
it's themed more as a scientist than a poet in his native Persia. But in Fitzgerald's rendering, he became one of the most quoted poets in English. Kayam's line, a loaf of bread, a jug of wine, and thou, is known to many who could not say who wrote it or where. Okay, during the early literature, we have Sadi and Rumi, Hamdullah Mustafi, Nasid on Bin Tusi. Now, class, there are three stages in Persian development when it comes to short story. And we do have formative period, growth and development. We have the period of diversity. During the formative period, we have Muhammad Ali Ali Zamal Sadi. We, all, we also have Sadi Hidayat. And during the growth and development period, we have, I'm not sure if this is Jalal or Alal Ali Ahmad. During the period of diversity, we have Akbar and Bebani. We also have Arif Gazvini and Shar. We also have classical Persian poetry. We have Muhammad Takibar, the king of poets. We have Parvin Stizami, the greatest Persian poetess, poetess. And during the modern, modern Persian poetry, we have Nimayushi, the father of modern Persian poetry. We, all, we also have Shamlu, Farouk Hadis, okay. Shamlu and Farouk Zadis. All right, so since their name is, their names are somewhat, you know, they have, a, they have different name pronunciations, which are really not familiar to all of us, but we'll see. All right, class. Um, our, some of the common literary works from Persian literature are, you know, the Rubaiyat by Omar Khayyam and the Voyage of Sinbad, the Sailor, excerpts from Arabian Nights. Okay, so let me type this here in our, in our chat box. We have Rubaiyat. And the voyage by Omar Khayyam, right? By Omar Khayyam. Okay, and then we have the voyage of Sinbad, the sailor. All right, excerpt from Arabian Nights. Okay. So, class for our asynchronous meeting, I'd like you to research and read these two literary pieces, the Rubaiyat by Omar Khayyam and the Voyage of Sinbad. 
Okay, the voyage of Sinbad the sailor, an excerpt of Arabian Arabian Nights. Okay, I'll be putting uh, a bean in our model about this. Right? Okay. <clears throat> 